Hi, this is Susan Allen with the Quilt Asylum in McKinney, Texas, and I'm here to talk to you about Clearly Perfect Angles. It's a tool for making quick snowball or connector corner blocks or half square triangles. There's lots of ways to make both of these blocks. Uh, the traditional way, the, the low budget way, if you will, is to take your square and draw a diagonal line either across your connector corner or across a set of squares that are faced together and then on your connector corner sewing directly on the diagonal line on the mark or on your half squares making the mark on the true diagonal and then sewing a quarter inch away from that line and then you would cut this apart open it up and then you have your two half square triangles easy peasy that's the way traditionally it's done when you're working with squares like this but if you are doing a project that has a multitude of connector corners or a multitude of half square triangles like the long time gone project by Jen Kingwell you might want a tool that makes this process faster that tool is called clearly perfect angles let me zoom out so you can see it it's called clearly perfect angles and this is what the front of the cover looks like take it out of the package you get full instructions on how to apply it to your machine and how to use it but I'm going to show you that and then if you flip this over here is the tool it is a static cling that fits to the bed of your machine it comes on a piece of paper and you just peel that off and it's a static cling and you will use these guidelines to feed your fabric and it completely eliminates having to write or make that mark on your fabric. So let's go to the sewing machine and see how that works. Here we are at the sewing machine with the Clearly Perfect Angles tool already attached. It is simply a static cling like so, static cling like a window cling. It's not sticky, easily repositionable. So it's been attached to the surface of my sewing machine bed and my extension table. I will say you will need some sort of surface, surface area to attach this to. If you simply have just the machine with the arm or the free arm, it's probably not going to be enough space to use the tool effectively. So when you take it out of the package, and there's complete instructions on how to do this. Drop my foot for a minute. This is all plastic, and there's a dot where you put your needle down to position it. Then you line up the lines with the seam lines on your um, throat plate. After you get it all positioned to make sure that this center line is lined up with your needle, you'll take something like a seam ripper and you'll come in and you'll cut away the portion that covered your feed dogs because we kind of need our feed dogs to pull our fabric through. So let me put my foot back on, get the thread out of the way. There's a whole lot of lines on this tool. This line is your center line. It lines up with your needle. The lines on either side of the center line are a quarter inch away from the needle position. There are small dashed lines out here to the left and right of center. They are 5 8 inch which is good for garment making or bad banking or some project that needs a larger seam allowance. This horizontal line right here lines up with your needle. The dash line in front of that is a quarter inch away from your needle, which is nice if you are doing inset seams, Y seams, like a Lemoyne Le Moine star, it's not a hard word, uh, where you need to stop a quarter inch away so that you can do your pivot and do your Y seam. So let's see how this works. And all these instructions come with the tool and there are also videos by the company for the tool. So let's say we're making a connector corner. These are very common in snowball blocks. Um, fly, some flying geese are made this way and we're going to sew directly diagonal to diagonal. So I'm going to put my needle down and I'm going to line up that point right here with my needle and I'm going to line the other point with this center line. I'm 
I know it's I'm trying not to get my hands in the way, but I kind of need both of them. Now if I take this off, you can see with my black thread that I have sewn from diagonal to diagonal without marking a single line. And if I were to cut that off, press that up, I have a perfect connector corner, snowball corner. Let's get that out of the way. So now let's talk about half squares. Some patterns have you sew half squares, put your two squares together, right sides together, and they do have you sew from diagonal to diagonal. You'll cut a quarter inch away to the right of the seam line, and then this is discarded. You would make that just like you made the snowball block or connector corner where you line up your point with your needle and then you would follow the center line all the way through. More efficient use of fabric is a diagonal line is drawn and then you sew on a quarter inch on either side. Well, we're not going to draw any lines. We're, not, we're skipping that step. That's the whole point. So now I'm going to line up this square with the line that is a quarter inch to the left of center. Now to make sure that I'm starting in the right direction, this, these diagonal lines are a perfect 45 degree from the center line. So if I line up correctly on that diagonal line, I know I'm starting in the right place and I'm not crooked like this. So if I line up with the diagonal, make sure my point is down here at the bottom, drop my presser foot, Begin sewing. And why are we not moving? There we go. Sew it all the way through. So I have one line. Now I'm going to turn this around. Do exactly the same thing. Line up with that line. Line up down here. You can see with the black thread that I have sewn a quarter inch from diagonal and I never marked a line. This is really handy if you have a block that has, oh, let's say 60 of these. Um, it saves you a lot of time for marking. It's a great time saver. Also, if you leave it on here, this line right here, this green, green bar, green line, is a quarter inch to the right of the needle. You can use it as a guide when you're just sewing blocks together. Now I would, I would caution you before you blindly do this that you do some test piecing to make sure that you are, your cling is in the right place because if you're off a 32nd of an inch over time that's going to cause your block to not come out to the right size. But once you have done a tester, sewn a few pieces together, pressed them, measured to make sure that they come out the right size, you can use this as your line for just simply sewing your quilt blocks together. Question you may have, you can see that I have a, a drop down bobbin on top for my machine. It's not down here. So when I run out of bobbin and this is on here, how do I change my bobbin? I simply roll this back, release the bobbin, change my bobbin, put my thing back in, roll, it's gonna recling and I'm ready to go once again. Pretty easy peasy. It's a great time saver. It'll help you get through blocks and projects like Long Time Gone, which uses a whole lot of half squares and connector corners. You'll get through that a lot faster. Again, this is Susan Allen with the Quilt Asylum in McKinney, Texas. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.